One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, one, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One leg up. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stretch one more. Go back here. Okay, guys, just a quick warm up. Come on, guys, and drink. Get ready. Okay. All right, guys. So. Um, I'm gonna go uh, show you guys some uh, concepts, the way that I like to to progress my facts, you know. And then uh, this kind of concept that I'm gonna uh, apply today is a kind of concept that, independent of what the guy know, knows what's coming or not, I can still go through. It's not like a surprise attack, you know. Like a lot of my my setups and my games, I, tr I tend to think this way, you know. That's why sometimes goes under control but slow but under control so this is like a little bit of a, a, a different style that I, I like to use one thing that we're gonna be thinking about before anything you know it's like make sure that he cannot start escaping a side control you know because sometimes we tend to fight uh, against the problem but instead of beforehand fight to don't allow the problem to, de to develop so you fight for a smaller I guess a smaller thing you know uh, one of the things that I like to, to emphasize here, one of the little tricks I actually even mentioned before here. Um, when I get to the side for top, I don't necessarily put all my weight constantly on one side unless if I'm focused only on the shoulder. If I'm focused around the whole body, I like to keep myself kind of balanced under control. Like for example, I like to hold a lot his hips. So even though sometimes I don't squeeze the hips by the ribs, but I'm actually pulling his body towards me and towards my knee to avoid heat move the hips away. Therefore, that knee, that usually is a very annoying knee, right? We try to pass the guy's guard, we get to the side control, the guy goes, whoop, his hips escape, put the knee, push it back to the half guard. This is one of the most annoying things for me. So that's why I try always to keep that control here, because if he cannot move the hips out, the knee will never be a problem. And then, of course, I balance with my whole control over One of my, my tactics, constantly, is to keep the guy's elbows under my, under my uh, surveillance. Like, I was, I was controlling constantly to don't let the elbow touch the floor. I think once he put the elbow on the floor, that means that he can open some gap to roll. I can allow, expect something from him, but I, I like to keep under my control towards my attack to independent of what he knows, I can still succeed. So, this elbow is under my control, and I like to have the other one under my control. Sometimes, that's what happens. The elbow is underneath, and I don't have pull under control. So that's one of the attacks I'm going to show today. It's going to be how to get that elbow. I like personally try to go to one side and then put it nice and tight, and it goes in. Sometimes not so easy, okay? But can you see that I'm not actually overcommit myself to one side here? But as long as I have that elbow, that's what I meant. He cannot throw me over with so much power because he needs to put this elbow on the floor to generate enough power to push me over. So if I have the elbow, if I go forward and push me over here, look, he just can start but can never finish. So with this in mind, I can go to the side and come back in. Sometimes it's very difficult. The guy is strong, you know, and it goes here like, doesn't have enough power. So that's when I go and I grab the triceps, even though the guy's very nice and tight. Just go to the tricep, rock and work forward, and then turn. There, I use a different part of my body to use the concept, which is keeping the elbow above the ground. Above, I mean, my body under his, his elbow. Like that, he can never put, the, if I squeeze inwards, I have one elbow, I have the other elbow, try to put this elbow on the floor. So the height, that's one little trick, look at this. The height doesn't change, put the elbow on the floor. See? So the movement downwards doesn't exist 
only has this movement, this movement. And that's when I start to put in place the concept of a controlling, even though he knows what's coming, I have the control. So if I focus on one direction, it's only my control, no matter what, if I have the arm over here, in a lock over here, now I'm not worried about upwards, because if he upwards, he gives me arm. So he cannot pull and pull, try, try to move around now here. Yeah? I'm not actually squeezing to don't let him move down, I'm just trying to keep it tight. And my elbow, uh, his elbow is under my control, so he can never put the elbow on the ground, so I don't really need to be, oh my god, he cannot move the elbow. Just be that, keep it up, okay? And then that's what I wanted to, to see at the moment, is this transition first, then I will complete the submission, like you already know, but I just want to show a little detail that I used here. Okay, so, I want elbow, bicep, rock, come back in, and make sure the knee is very low. Don't mistake, you guys already know what I'm, what's gonna happen here, right? I wanna pass my leg over the head. You guys already know that. But don't mistake, getting closer to the, to the head is gonna be easier because it's not gonna be easy. Yeah? So focus on lock your floating rib to his floating rib. And then the leg will come. It's not gonna be so simple because he will defend, right? So that's what you're gonna do. And that's when I'm gonna talk about the concepts on how to keep the key points under your control. Even though he knows coming, he cannot do nothing about it. Okay, so let's just get this right first. Okay, from here, elbow, on top, on top of the tricep, rock forward, shift, so the knee goes straight under his ribs, cage, and then be kind of low. If I have the elbow under my control, he cannot put this on the floor. There's one skate that actually I have a lot of, I have a lot of people do this very successful. It's like by putting this bridging up here and sitting up and sitting down, sit down. Let's push. Yeah, and push. Push up. Yeah, and end up here. You know, usually short guys are very explosive on that. But this only gonna happen if I don't have the belt. Because he will need this hand to post and go forward. So if he try, try to do the same thing here, it's not gonna happen. So that's one little thing that you need to work. Okay, so let's just focus on this switch. Feel the control, then we're gonna go for the next step. Okay, Post. Se tiver pra dentro, aí é que eu vou mostrar a situação, que não necessariamente eu tenho que ver ela. É que o Fagão ensina a gente ficar com a mão no peito. O Bernardo tá desfilando. É, aquele carinha chato, né? Faz assim, assim. Isso! Faz aí. Aí me perguntando, mas e se eu colocar a mão? Agora o Luciano tem a nossa principal posição, que deu uma parada aqui, ó. Fica de um jeito aqui, velho. Hi, uh, my name is Brody Simon. Uh, I'm here at the Marcelo Garcia headquarters and I'm with the pleasure to explain all the most good looking class Jiu Jitsu technique for you guys. Apart from the time. <laughs> no, he's good looking. Listen, I show, I throw you a little bit of uh, some stuff just to give you, get you guys a little bit intrigued uh, how, oh, uh, and this and that. So I just start like breaking down a little bit more. Okay? Look. Uh, remember, the object that I want here is stop he start stop to for he, stop him to start something that can become a problem, which is make the hips, pass the leg over my head. You know, I, I don't want to fight against the leg coming to me. I want to stop what he needs to do to the leg to come to the top of me. If it makes sense, okay? For example, one of the the, the most common situation that happens here is that I push my head and pass the leg over. Oh my God, this is the worst thing possible. But did you, did you see that he did a little bit of a hop first? Did you notice? Look, can you pass the leg over again? Look, you hop. Hop, pass the leg, boom, right? So that means if that hop doesn't exist, the leg would never be a problem. Make sense? So that's how I think on the fight. I don't let him start the first movement that will become a problem here. Yeah, so if I have the elbow under control here, and I focus here, and I lock, if he comes to, you to put the leg over, it's normally kind of a problem because you need the hop first. So why worry about the leg? Do you understand? So, other thing, my elbow is constantly pulling and locking. So the other situation I like to think about here, when I hold, as I hold the triceps, 
I don't only hold, but actually do like a little bit of a arm wrestling. Like, yeah, because I try to, to, to control as much as possible as part of the body. One question was, uh, was this hand in or out? How can, I, how can I end up here? Well, at this time, I'm trying to, to consider that the guy is here. He's not with the hand through, okay? If he is like that, that's going to be our next movement, okay? But for now, let's most naturally, we here, we pass the guy, goes here, that's when we start. We pass the guard, lock the hip. Now I go up, triceps, turn, okay? One thing that I, that I, uh, I, uh, I, told, I told in the first class, in the first section, was the height, yeah? About that he cannot put the elbow down. So if he doesn't put the elbow down, why do I have to have the elbow under my control? You understand? So I can use my hand to something else because the hand here is doing the job that my leg could be doing already. Okay, so I can actually free one part of my body to try to solve another problem, which, for example, this problem is actually annoying because and then you can get everything very close in it and you don't have this. If the guy knows what's coming, keep it arching, it's gonna be very hard for me to do the movement. Okay, so I will make all the, like cross all the ocean uh, swimming and die in the beach on the other side. So that's not worth it. Okay? <laughs> it's not worth it. That's what you say in Portuguese. Okay? So, what I like to do here is focus on what can he do to skate. So I had already focused on it. He cannot start to move hips. He cannot put the elbow on the floor. He cannot put the other elbow on the floor because of my leg, but not because of my hand. And now, I don't want him to do this while I'm going there, because that's the thing. We get to here, and we're excited. I have the arm, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna defend, 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 defend. And then look, it's gone. Why? Because I didn't manage to control the, this hand within my arm here. But look, I need to build a little bit of a cage with my elbow, yeah? To don't let the hand come out. That's all I need to do. If I focus on keeping the elbow control, one, two, and then I don't let the cage come out, he won't be able to move out the hand because the height is not there, right? So how can he take this hand around this circle cage here if he's not pulling the elbow down? Do you understand what I'm saying? So if I lock here, try to put this elbow down. I don't need the elbow because my thigh is holding the elbow, the height. Do you understand? So I don't need to focus too much on that. So if I'm here, now becomes a trick. How can I push his head at the same time that I don't let the cage open? Because as soon as the cage open, he put, it's gone. Yeah, he could, can put over the, uh, over the neck here, for example. Yeah, you go here, put, oh, yeah, and it, there's nothing to catch. So if I cannot separate, bring it together. So from here, one, look, it's, it's not like the best comfortable situation or this most comfortable position to do but I don't do because I feel comfortable I do it because I I know what he needs he cannot do it you know so I'm here look try to take off the arm try to take off the arm he knows from here he already know oops it's coming and I know that he knows and he won't be able to do nothing if I hold those key points so that's I compare this kind of technique, this system, like a juggler, you know? The better juggler are those that can handle the most pins at the same time while doing the, the, the presentation, right? So, but then he never started with 10 pins at the same time. Started with three, four, five, and they keep adding until you get better. So that's how it is. We have, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Can we do it? And that's how we become like a better juggler, a better fighter, okay, on this, on this scenario. So I'm here, one, Keep it tight, lock, look. Try to sit up the head, he can't. Try to click off the arm, he can't. Look, one, and go. And he go. Do you understand? Let's go. Get this arm in the full arm. So what you do is you let it go in his hand, push it down, and push it down. 
Like, I always below there. Now, I'm trying to slide your leg away and put your knee in place of your knee. Once again, uh, just like to say to the owner to share some content with you guys here. I passed a little bit more of the time, but I wanted to break down as much as possible. It's not all the time that here in New York, and uh, especially here at Marcel's Academy. Uh, let's see. Uh, thanks very much for the good reception. I felt great here. Thanks, Marcelo. Thanks, Bernardo. Tati, Josh, everyone. And, uh, Thanks for, for kicking my butt as well. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Guys, I, I wish you guys understand how, how this is such a good experience for me. Like someone that we know each other for a long time, most just from the competition, compete against each other see each other like in, in the bleaches in the tournament, talk a little bit, I mean, and now we have the chance to train together, have a class from him, have him join our train some days, you know what I mean? It's just like a, amazing for me. Because the most important uh, on, on my life doing jiu-jitsu was just do jiu-jitsu. Not about the business, not about the win, just enjoy doing this. And that's why I choose that, so it was great. But this is the most important. Today, I have a chance to reach that level that I have a contact, we have a friendship, and we can always, uh, we can all be together in the same man. Like, uh, forget about competition, forget about like uh, 
which flag he is, have someone like a Braulio, imagine like a Bernardo, everybody in the same match. So that's, 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 I believe was my dream even, even like a without, without being able to imagine something that big, you know what I mean? I was always wish to have something that important, but I couldn't ever imagine something that important, you know what I mean? Like, this was too much to me, imagine, like, my gym full of that, that level of Jiu-Jitsu, you know? So, I'm really appreciate that, that experience, and I'm, I'm looking forward to have more of this, and with you, bro. But also, I hope you guys enjoy that too, all right? So, and, Guys, thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoy it. Yes. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>